It's time for the movie raid, and tonight's victim is actor and acting instructor Corey Parker that played in Friday the 13th, A New Beginning, and Biloxi Blues. Hello. Hey, how you doing? Now, you as an actor, they're young actors especially, uh, potentially have an ego, and sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad, sometimes it's just ridiculous of, of how they act and win in acting after getting certain roles and becoming getting famous and whatnot. But do you think it can be a distraction while acting? They have an ego? Yes. Well, you could kind of it's a, yeah, it's tricky. You kind of need an ego because who else is going to get up in front of a bunch of people and say, look at me? So, you know, you, you need that, but you need to also realize that you've got to put it into uh, the work, you know, into the acting. Uh, that's a really important aspect of it. Yeah, it's just the fact that for a while, if they get uh, land a good job in terms of roles, they would continue to build up that confidence. But sometimes that confidence can become greedy. And, of course, you know, that that is part of the business. It's that there are a lot of actors that the money, the fame, and so forth but there's the humble ones that are the ones that get really good feedback and don't really potentially care about the money and ego in today's era is becoming more and more effective that way yeah i mean it's uh you know there there aren't a lot of actors that just want to do it just to do it i mean usually there's some desire to build a career and, and get seen and um you know when you start working, you got to make sure that you you understand you you don't want to self destruct. You know you want to treat people well. You want to be a good guy in, in the audition. Um, you know you don't want to be negative. And you so you start to build something and you keep those relationships going. The guys that that I've known who are you know real big now. I mean they there there have been some self destructs in there, but but if they've got the chance, you know everyone can learn um, how to try to build a business, which is really what you're doing. Oh yeah, industry itself it it can swallow up if you don't know what you're doing and do you have any advice that in terms of financial wise do you think they should have some kind of a plan as as they enter this field oh yeah definitely i mean i think it's good you know learn a, a separate trade so that because acting is is not regular money unless you're really successful it's just not so you know you can wait tables you can work another job you can you can create your own business i remember when i got to la there was an actor who started a business where he was making demo reels for people and you know whatever you can come up with but you can also go to college you know you can go to college and uh, come up with a plan b which is good to have because acting is there's nothing constant or dependable about acting at all it's a pretty crazy thing to get into so the smartest thing you can do is set yourself up well and you don't worry when you don't have auditions you've got your other job so that's that's pretty important any type of career takes a very long time to get to and yeah. there are those actors that really make uh, uh, making the making in terms of acting and just get that great role and then they keep getting that great role over and over but it takes time and it definitely takes uh, a lot of patience and, and you also have to keep your head on straight otherwise if you're just going all over the place and you want this and this and this you know, chances are you're, you're asking a little bit too much to, for yourself yeah I mean I tell the actors I work with you know it, there's a tendency for young actors to think well I'm just going to you know break into this business and be a, be a big star be a big hit but you know I tell people when you watch a TV show or you watch watch a movie and you see an actor that playing a role you think you could play or any actor that you like at all go look them up on IMDb and you're going to see most of the time that those actors have been doing it for 10 years at least you know they've worked on a lot of other jobs you know that's that's just the reality it does take time like you say so it's like if you say well you know, what am I going to do for the next five or ten years if you want to devote that toward building something you can build it you got to study with the right teachers you got to be in the right place at the right time and you got to take care of your head you know you, you definitely got to take care of your mind and your spirit and do the things that are productive and, and you can't get into being destructive it's just it stops everything and, and building that it, including character wise no matter what role it is you have to build up the character or the will of to making a character uh, even if it is given to you by a director or writer and both that way you can get a, a general idea of what type of actor you're going to be that's exactly true there's a lot of different types of actors and you can look at actors not only from today but back to the 40s and 50s there are some great actors giving great performances and each with his own style or her own style so there's a lot you can study just understand that actors have been succeeding at this for a very long time that does take a lot of work you know as far as a character for, for me characters start with the writer you know the writer's written the character so you know you, you read through the script a few times you underline everything that's mentioned about your character and you, you start to piece together with your own creativity who this character might be and that's that's a fun part of the you know the, the creative part but 
Yeah, that, that does take time. And, and while they go for these type of characters, whichever it is, what do you think should be a, a more of an influence to them how, to get to this uh, emotional role for them? You mean getting to the emotion? Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, there was uh, there was this great teacher, you know, in, in Russia uh, in the late 1800s uh, named Konstantin Stanislavski. You know, and he was the one that looked at the greatest actors then and said, well, let's try to create a system for actors. And so he created a lot of different techniques. There's not just one. One of the things that he created was a technique called the affective memory or emotional memory, which was uh, used for a long time. And it simply meant, you know, you remember a memory from the past, remember how you felt there and, and the person you were talking to there, and, and you start to, you know, work from that point of something that actually genuinely affects you. But some people don't want to work like that. I mean, it can be destructive if you do it over the long term. So there are many different ways. Someone's just using your imagination. You know, there was a teacher named Stella Adler who really emphasized imagination, whereas Lee Strasberg really emphasized the emotional recall. So there's many different ways. You can search and you can create your own way um, that's believable to you. You just have to believe it, have a sense of belief, and hopefully it's not a destructive one, and, um, and you can create, you know? In terms of the audience, how would you want them to make them believe the character? Well, I think if you do something authentic, people will believe it. You know, if you... The people enter the theater with the willing suspension of disbelief. You know, they... They enter with a willingness to suspend their disbelief. That means they're kind of ready to believe. They, they want the story to take them away. They want this story to actually affect them. So that's what they want. They're not, it's not tough to do at, at first, but it's up to the actors and the director to create something that's believable, that has urgency and importance, and where people care, that makes the audience care. So if the actor cares, and sets himself up well that he's in a situation in the play or the movie, he's in these circumstances, and he, he's got to figure out what to do to get to the next step, and he really cares, he sincerely cares, and he, just like he does in real life, and he tries to go after what he needs to go after, that's going to get people's attention. We like to watch people when they're really doing something like that. Um, it's only when actors are false, and they have false notes, that it turns the audience off, and then they don't like you. <laughs> they're very, they, you know, very quick to decide they don't like you, but if you stay believable, they're with you. You've got them, you know. The companies are getting bigger, money is getting larger, and that is well stricter. Time management is getting stricter. In terms of teaching, uh, what steps are you wanting to guide them to? I mean, the, my job as a teacher is, you know, to bring out the, what gifts that actor has, what's authentic about them, because nobody else has it. You know, you have something authentic about you that nobody else can do. And so I, I try to bring that out in the actor and get them to trust it, you know, so they're not doing hammy, bad acting. They're actually starting to work from what's authentic at them. Just like if you think of big actors like Meryl Streep or Robert De Niro or Denzel Washington or Pacino, these are all authentic actors. You know, there's something about them that we feel no matter what character they play. We get a sense of just their presence, and that's, that's not easy to do. But if I can train an actor to find his authenticity, start to rely on it and use it, and then the next step is preparing the actor for how to actually sell that product. That's the product, and it takes a lot of time to become really good at bringing that into an audition and rocking with it, you know, really nailing that audition with the work that you do, showing them what you've got. Uh, actors have a lot of fear and security, or if they lack technique, um, they can make very obvious mistakes, and people don't want to hire that. You know, people want to hire someone that's ready to shoot right now. You know, if they're shooting next week, you can't hire someone who's making amateur mistakes. So you want to prepare someone to do something real, something genuine, and then to be able to walk in and, and walk that walk in the room. You know, that, it's, it's a business. Hollywood's a business, you know, and, and even for indies, if indies want success, if they want to be at uh, film festivals, I mean, they, they want some kind of hook. You know, it's the good acting is not always the goal in a production with some people, you know. When I worked with Mike Nichols as a director, he wanted good acting. But some directors don't care. They just want something that's going to have a hook, get attention, and, and hopefully make the money. And that that's more often than not, you know. So it, there's, there's room for all kinds, but it's up to the young actor to decide what kind of actor you want to be, you know, because it takes work to really do it. You have to sell the product. You have to wrap the product. You have to make this product as your yourself, not just what you're assigned to, of course. Yeah. I mean, this is a multi-billion dollar worldwide industry. It's, it's very influential and it's, it's present all over the world. I mean, you know, when I was coming out there, you didn't have this kind of worldwide reach, you know, to the extent that you have it today. And that affects casting, you know.
know, sometimes they'll cast someone that they think is popular in a market, a foreign market. I mean, it, it, it is run as a business. It's a very big business. It's a very powerful business. I mean, if, if you have the power to bring people all over the world into rooms, dark rooms, and, and show them whatever story you wanted to show them and affect them the way that you want to affect them and have them pay you large sums of money to do it, I mean, that's a lot of power. This industry is undeniably, uh, you know, a very powerful business. And of course, it used to be, the audience used to be make or break uh, your acting careers. Well, one of the things that, that started happening now is that um, casting directors are also considering, they're looking at what size of a, a Twitter account an actor has, how many followers they have. This is actually being considered as part of the casting process now, and it's been spoken about in a, a number of interviews out of L.A., so it's, it, that has nothing to do with acting, but, you know, they feel that it might affect um, their audience, you know, having a bigger audience if they cast the right person. There are a lot of factors now that are going into the hiring of the actor, you know, and uh, I don't know, you know, if you want to have a Twitter account and see how many, how many people you can get, you know, some actors might need to do that, but um, I think at the, at the end of the day, the bottom line is going to be being able to affect someone, to move someone, you know, and, and that's that's the job. You think that's slowly dissipating in a way, trying to get to that one special moment to hit everybody, and there are actors who've done that multiple times throughout their whole career, and then some of them just get it once, and then that's it. Yeah, I mean, it's a, there, there's a great uh, book um, by Charles Grodin called, uh, It Would Be So Nice If You Weren't Here, and he, he's had a very long career since the 60s, a lot of ups and downs, he was number one in the box office for a time. Uh, he was in Midnight Run with uh, De Niro. But, you know, he, he really had a healthy attitude about the rejection and the negativity and just sort of staying on your task. You know, that you stay in class, you keep getting better no matter what. You know, no matter what you hear, you, you do the best that you can. But there's also the element of timing. I mean, a lot of people who have big careers, they will talk about it. You hear them talk about it. I mean, Dustin Hoffman talks about it. You know, that things just fell into place all of a sudden. Um, I think Duval has spoken about it. You know, I, they turned around and they met someone, and this person was someone else. And suddenly, it, this thing of timing and connecting and networking, is it's, it's definitely an aspect to having longevity. I, I don't know that actors were trained in the 70s to have longevity. They were trained just to be good. But I think since the 80s and 90s that there's a lot more awareness among the serious actors for longevity. They don't want to just do a good part or be big in a movie. They want to build a career. Yeah, and unfortunately, that's that's a sad thing. It's like instead of just building a career, that's just... Of course, it is a job, but then a lot of them just treat it as purely a job. And it can be exhausting. It can be irritating. You signed up for it, even if you didn't sign up for it. It is a part of it. it but the thing is, if you get that role out there and make some of that, of what that character is, because your name's going to be attached to it. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've, I've known a lot of actors who, who still have great careers. And the, and the thing that's in common to all of those actors and actresses is that they never quit. I mean, it's not that they didn't struggle. It's not that they didn't maybe sometimes get fired or not get the job they wanted, but they just never quit. They just kept doing it. And that's what it requires, you know. And anytime an actor goes through something really difficult, you know, you can always think of the fact that, you know, if I don't want to go through this anymore, there are other actors who do. And there's always a competition out there. So if they can handle it, then maybe I can handle it too. You know, there's just all the different ways that we have to deal with what it's like. And one of the things that I really recommend to young actors is to read autobiographies of famous actors over the past, you know, 50 years. Because a lot of the, the actors over the past 50 years who have written autobiographies, they tell you about, like, the worst moments. They tell you about the hardest things. They tell you about how did they overcome their obstacles. I mean, they tell you about how they worked as an actor, how they trained. I mean, you can learn so much from autobiographies. And so, um, you know, that's that's an important thing because there's always going to be these, these issues. And... Some people, you know, have to stop. I mean, some people are just saying, no, I'm not doing it anymore. You know, and that's that's understandable. You know, that's a, that's always a possibility. Well, and the film industry rapidly changes. The rules change and everything. But do you think actors should be a little bit choosy and a little bit cautious in terms of even what genres to choose to, to get jobs in? I mean, I think when you, when you look at something, you look at the script and see if it's any good. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. You know, when you're a young actor, you're not necessarily going to be getting the great scripts right away. But then you, you definitely want to look at who's producing it. You know, if you've, you know, if you've got a, a studio film, you know, you, that would be a good thing to be a part of for, on a lot, of, a lot of levels. But if you've got an indie, you know, I think you want to see what have those people done before. If they've never made anything, um, there's, a, there's a, just a lot of possibility that they're not going to really know what they're doing. They're going to be learning on the job. And, you know, if you want to be a part of that, that's fine. But also some people have, you know, done things that weren't great. They've made some messes, and it's good to find out who's producing the project. I mean, bottom line to me for an actor is, can I get footage off of this 
next job. In other words, if I if I get to shoot a scene in a movie, can I get that footage for my demo reel? I mean, an actor has to build a demo reel, so you need that footage. And if it'll give me some, sometimes you can just do a job for that reason. Is there any projects or anything that you want to share or even advice that would you like to share to everybody else? I just think that, you know, if, if you're a young actor, it's possible for you to have, you know, a relationship with, with acting itself. I mean, you can be an actor. It's something that you can do. And acting is an amazing thing. It's unlike anything else, any other art form. And acting will invite you in, and acting will give you a place to work, and it will accept you as you are. And that's a pretty amazing thing. You know, the next thing to me for a young actor is to start reading plays. You know, don't just watch movies. Go read plays. There are, you know, America has had a number of great playwrights. You know, read their plays. Read Horton Foote. Read Edward Albee. Read Sam Shepard. You know, even read Neil Simon. I mean, there are, you know, great playwrights. Read them. You know, read plays because you're going to learn so much about acting just by reading. These are the best writers, you know, incredible writers. And when they write, they really are giving to the actor. You know, bad writers, it's very hard to act. But great writers, they give it to you. And so, you know, from there, you know, get your friends together. Do a reading of a play. Pick a play you really like. There are some awesome plays. And sit around with your friends, make some copies of it or buy some copies. And start reading plays once a week. You know, you can can start acting uh, without anyone's help. You don't need help to get started. You get your own crew together and you just start working. Start reading. There are acting books, you know. There's there's Ivana Chubbuck's book, um, Susan Batson's book. Uh, There are books by Lee Strasberg and Stella Adler and and Harold Quirman and Sanford Meisner. You know, these were the great teachers. And it's important to read. When you read an acting book, you don't have to get down on yourself or take everything totally literally. Just read it. You know, just see what they're saying. Get a sense of them. And then you can start to work from there. Get involved if you want to get involved with the theater, if you want to start, get involved with uh, with indies or with film. You can also start to create your own indies. I mean, why not? If you've got a camera, get your friends together, start writing something, and just start creating. I mean, Sean Penn and Emilio Estevez did, did this in, in Malibu. When they were very young, they just got an 8 millimeter and started shooting. So why not? You can start working that way. Get used to working in front of the camera. Read on-camera books. There are great books for working on camera. There are interviews with famous actors talking about working on camera. So, you know, it's totally doable. It's possible. It takes work. It is not going to be easy because you're going to have to get other people to say, yes, I will hire you. Yes, I will pay you. And people don't always want to do that. So if you don't like rejection, that might make it a problem. But if you've got a lot of passion and courage and it's something that you feel a connection with, then pursue it. You know, pursue it. And even take small time jobs, even like commercials. It is. It could be local commercials. It could be on a new local newscast. The, right. the point is, it, this is to help you get where you want to start as an actor. This even is something as mediocre as it can be. That's where you want to be, man. Yeah, it is. And 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 you're right. You can do commercials. You can do voiceovers. You can do any kind of acting job. Industrial films. Whatever you can get, you can do extra work. There's plenty of extra work when I was younger. You're, you're around the set. You're not necessarily treated very well, but you're you know you're on a set and you get to start. If you pay attention, watch how they deal with the camera. Watch how the actors deal with the camera. You know you can learn a lot. There's 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 plenty for you to do if if you're really into it. If you wanted to learn how to become a, a printer, or you wanted to learn how to become like a, a lawyer. Or you want to learn how to become like uh, an accountant. Uh, you know, these are kind of boring things, but the thing about them is they take time to learn, dude. You've got to spend time and, and learn them. And acting is the same way. People have this sense that, you know, people see actors on TV and they say, oh, I could do that. What you don't realize is that that actor just spent 10 or 15 years working hard to make that look that easy. It's not that easy. It really isn't. The people who get hired have been have earned that place to be able to show you that it's easy. And as far as going to teachers, of course, go to teachers. I mean, but, but really test your teacher out. You know, have they worked as an actor? Um, have they trained with, uh, with other teachers that were good? I mean, where are they coming from? You know, there are teachers who have never trained and never worked who are teaching acting, and I don't know what they're teaching. I don't know what they could possibly teach you. So if you want to learn something, find someone who's done the thing you want to learn. That's what I suggest. If a teacher says he's been in movies, you can look on IMDb. If he says he's been on TV, you can look on IMDb. If it's not there, he hasn't. Period. Got a bio? That should tell everything. You know, I've, I've, there's, a, there's a teacher I've seen who, you know, won't put a bio out or any information. I mean, so I already know there's a problem. I mean, any teacher of acting usually was an actor. That means they like attention. They want to show off. So if they've done work, they're going to put it out there. You know, here's the work I've done. Here's the stuff I've done. I mean, you know, if anyone's secretive or mysterious, uh, you know, be, be cautious, you know. Well, what, ha- what happens when
when you start training is you start learning habits. Well, if you train well, you learn good habits. If you train with a bad teacher, you learn bad habits. And when I get someone who's trained with a bad teacher, that's okay. I can deal with it. But before I can teach them anything, I've got to start to untrain the bad habits. And bad habits are just bad acting. It's just really big, hammy, bad acting. It doesn't look good on camera. and Nobody hires it. Well, where can they find you in terms of if they want to go to you as, as far as learning how to act? I've got a, I've got a website. It's Corey Parker Actor. Dot com, so that's C-O-R-E-Y, P-A-R-K-E-R, actor.com. And, and there I've got all the stuff that I've done. I've got, you know, everything that, that you might want to know about me. And if you want to, you know, connect with me, you can do it there. And there you go, guys. That is Corey Parker, acting teacher as well as actor. Appreciate it. I really appreciate it. This was fun.